We're going to go through an engineering problem here on the course website, 263. If you come off to the right, you'll see homework. And this is going to be part of assignment number three. And if you scroll down, you'll see that uh, this is problem uh, number four of assignment three. So let's go ahead and just um, go through this one. We have uh, mixing liquid benzene and toluene together, initially empty container. Okay, so this here's our container. container. And at equilibrium, some of the liquid from both species will evaporate into the vapor phase. So we have our liquid and then also vapor. And we want to know the composition of the vapor. Okay, so I'll do Y1 and Y2. That's going to be our uh, benzene and toluene. And then also our liquid phase as well, X1 and X2. So we can use uh, these equations here. Um, this is going to be Raoult's law to give us the, these two expressions. Okay, so for each compound for uh, benzene and toluene, we can write uh, these expressions where this is the mole fraction in the vapor phase, this is the total pressure, this is the mole fraction in the liquid phase, and this is the vapor pressure of that pure liquid. And so we're going to do that for benzene uh, and for toluene. Okay, so we have uh, this expression right here that's going to go right up into our uh, vapor pressures. Okay, and we have um, these values for A, B, and C for those. And we want to make sure that our temperature right here is in degrees Celsius. So we've just divided by degrees Celsius, just letting uh, the users know to put uh, a value right here in degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's just an empirical correlation that will help us fit uh, the vapor pressure. So if we have uh, you know, y equals 0.33 and there's our pressure, we can calculate y2, just a two compound system. That's just going to be 1 minus y1. That's going to be 0 0.67 for y2. That's going to be the toluene mole fraction in the vapor phase. And then we want to be able to find x1 and t. Okay, so we have two equations and two unknowns. We also have another one, which is x2 equals 1 minus x1, um, or just the summation of all of the mole fractions has to equal 1. Uh, so that's going to be a third one, but we can go ahead and substitute that in. Okay, so we want to be able to solve for these two things, uh, figure out how many equations you have, and then how many variables. And um, so let's go over to Excel for this, and it gives you some I'll say before we go over, we also have some initial guesses right there. I'm going to just copy, I'm just going to snip out this tool, out this uh, right here, just so we can copy it into our Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so here is Excel. Okay, create a new sheet. I'll go ahead and paste this one in here. Uh, let me make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, and we'll have to put some of those in there as well. But let's go ahead and just put some of the things that we know from this problem statement in there first of all. Um, move this over just a little bit. Okay, so we have pressure is 120 kilopascals. And then Y1 is going to be 0 0.33, and Y2 is going to be 1 minus that. Okay, and then we also have our uh, PSAT uh, 1 and our PSAT 2. That's going to be a function of temperature. So we're going to have some guess values here as well. Uh, the guess values that we're going to have are temperature in degrees Celsius and then also our X1 value. And then X2 is just going to be 1 minus that. Okay, so let's put a guess value in there. We had a guess given to us, a 1 minus x1 and then let's just guess something around 100 degrees uh, Celsius okay and those are mole fractions so these are going to be the two values right here that we're going to guess okay let me just go ahead and color those those are going to be um, in yellow and all the rest of this is given we can calculate the PSAT 1 and PSAT 2 just with these uh, correlations but let's go ahead and just input this uh, these values for a B and C for benzene and toluene. 
Okay, it's 13.78192 6.81. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we have the vapor pressures now. Let's go ahead and calculate these based on that temperature. So we had um, a correlation here. Uh, let's go into back over here and grab that correlation. Okay, and I'll go ahead and erase this as well. Maybe just snip that one out um, just so we can see it. Copy it and let's go back to Excel. Okay, so I'm going to paste this one in here as well. Okay, so there's our correlation for vapor pressure. And this one is going to be equal to um, exponent. So I'm going to do the exponent of uh, exponential of both sides. And then we're going to have um, A1. So this is going to be for benzene. Uh, compound 1 is going to be benzene. Minus, and then we'll do B uh, divided by, and then our temperature, uh, plus C. Okay, so part of the hard part of this is just getting the parentheses right. Okay, and that's going to be in kilopascals as well. Okay, now what I can do is, um, you know, just drag this down. It's going to move all the cell references, including temperature. I'm, I'm going to go back and fix that, though. So let's just move temperature back up. It, it, um, it was able to get uh, the rest of those. So we have um, benzene is a little bit more volatile. It has a higher vapor pressure than the toluene. Now let's go ahead and do our final calculation. Go back to uh, here and put in these two equations as well. Okay, let me grab these. Just put them in our Excel spreadsheet. Makes it just a little bit more readable. And, okay, back in here. Okay, now I'm going to do these two equations and then set them up and solve them. So I'll do equation one and equation two. Okay, and I'll do the left-hand side and then the right-hand side of the equation. So the left-hand side of the equation is just going to be equal to uh, Y1. Uh, Y1 times the pressure. Okay, the total pressure. And then we also have uh, equal to Y2 times the pressure. Okay, so those are our left-hand sides. And they have to equal the right-hand side. So we're going to be have that equal to. That's uh, going to be equal to x1 um, times p1 sat. Okay, and then this is going to be equal to x2 times p2 sat. Okay, so I've got uh, these have to be equal to each other. So this is going to be the difference between those two. Um, and why don't we just go ahead and square it, um, just so we can, okay, oops, uh, no, okay, I'll go ahead and fix this myself. I was trying to be helpful there. I'll go ahead and square that. So this is the difference squared uh, for how this is not, these are not equal to each other. Um, and I've got, uh, I need to, Okay, so, so when I have the right answer in here, so I can change the degrees um, Celsius, that's going to change the difference there. I know I'm going to have a solution when the sum of these squared errors is equal to zero. So I have the sum of squared errors right here. And so I'm going to set up my solver now and just go to data, solver, and then set my objective function, which is right down here in H15. I want to set that to a minimum value by changing um, just these two cells right here, E1 and 2. And again, if you don't have solver available to you, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to leave this selected, make unconstrained value variables non-negative. Uh, if it goes negative degrees Celsius, though, you would need to uh, select that. But I assume that it's going to be higher than that. Okay, and. Let's go ahead and uh, see that I have a solution now that's a nearly equal to zero, and it gave me an answer to uh, degrees Celsius and to x1. 
Okay, so that uh, is the solution to this problem. We've solved for the mole fractions in the vapor and liquid phase that are consistent, and also the temperature. And uh, if you don't have solver, just come over to File, Options, and then uh, come down to Add-ins. Okay, and then select Go for Add-ins. Make sure this is selected, the solver add-in, uh, right there. And then under Data, you should be able to see the uh, solver.